Thank you very much uh, for the invitation to participate in this roundtable. Uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, presenting um, the main results of a couple of papers. Uh, Javier Aparicio and myself are academics, and we have been doing academic research on the Tres por Uno program, the Three for One uh, program. So I'm going to be presenting actually uh, a, few, a few comments and a few results that challenge a little bit uh, the view of uh, Ambassador Gomez in some respects that I'm going to be uh, mentioning. Uh, as, I was, um, as I was mentioning before, what we do in these two papers that were published in World Development and in Studies in Comparative International Development is to study the program from uh, a political perspective from a political economy perspective. So actually what we study here is how politics affect the allocation of resources uh, under, this, under this program. Um, there are two concerns um, uh, regarding the program for us. And the first concern is, as, uh, the ambas as Ambassador Gomez was explaining, this is a matching grant program. The Tres por Uno program is a matching grant. So hometown associations propose certain projects, and if the project is approved, uh, the federal, the state, and the municipality will be matching the resources that migrants uh, are putting forth. So there is a big problem in terms of the redistributional capacity of the program if if poverty is not directly correlated with migration. So as uh, Ambassador Gomez was mentioning, one of the purposes of this program is actually to target uh, poor communities. And uh, the problem is that, well, the program will be successful in targeting poor communities as long as migrants come from the poorest communities, which is not the case, as uh, most scholars uh, working on migration know. So this actually was our first concern. Migration and poverty are not, direct, are not directly correlated. And among migration localities, organized migrants come from relatively better off localities, which means that given the initiative uh, of these matching grants to uh, migrants is, going, is not going to be a progressive solution. Uh, this is uh, Mexico, um, and uh, there you have in the darkest areas, I have to, to say that this, this research uh, was uh, done with data from 2002, from 2007, so it's, it's a little bit outdated, but I think that the main results still hold. So there you have uh, migration, the migration intensity index. Uh, in the case of Mexico, as you can see, there are certain areas, the darkest ones, that are the areas of uh, highest uh, migration intensity. Uh, there are certain uh, states, specifically Guerrero, Guanajuato, Jalisco, Zacatecas, and Michoacán, that have had high, very high historical rates of migration, and those are the states that host the best organized hometown associations. Um, there is one problem uh, that I have just mentioned, which has to do with the fact that migrants, organized migrants, do not come from very poor in, um, communities. But there is another, program, another problem with the program, we thought, that had to do with uh, the process of allocation, the decision-making process uh, concerning who participates in the program, uh, how applications are decided, which applications are finally funded or not. And as uh, Ambassador Gomez was actually mentioning, uh, the decisions are made in a committee of validation and attention of migrants in which there are representatives of the federal, the state, and the municipal level plus migrants. So there are actually three layers of government plus the migrants participating in the decision of who is going to be benefiting from the program. And all these different levels of government have a party label. So we actually were uh, a little bit concerned when we uh, were studying the program about whether there could be political biases uh, in the decision of who was going to be benefiting from, from the program. Uh, there is an added problem uh, that, uh, as far as I know, it hasn't changed, and it is that there is no objective formula or criteria to allocate funds. So there is a high degree of discretionality, both political and also related to who actually gets to be organized uh, in terms of, uh, of benefiting uh, and participating in, in the program. So we feared, uh, as it has been uh, the case, I have to say, in other um, programs in, in Mexico, we fear that there could be as well political biases in the case of the Tres Peruno program uh, when it came to allocating resources. 
Uh, so there you have uh, more or less an explanation of the convoluted and complicated process uh, in order to decide who is going to be benefiting. There we have the state on the one hand, the CEDESOL, which is the representative of the federal government, the state is the subnational government, then we have the municipality. Uh, still we have another uh, layer of government, which is the locality, which is under the municipality, the locality or the community, and then we have the migrant hometown association. So actually we have a look at the decision-making process and who intervenes there, we see that migrants are just uh, one-fourth of the decision-making process, okay? So it very much depends uh, whether they are going to be able to push for their desired projects, uh, whether they are powerful or not, whether they have the power or not, and how well organized uh, they are or not, and what kind of counterparts they have, uh, they have to convince, no? Uh, so what we did was to collect data on uh, participation in the program at the municipal level for uh, 2002 to 2007. And we gathered data concerning my the migration index, the, uh, the migration index by municipality, the uh, marginalization index by municipality, as well as a sort of, uh, as well as, as very, as, as um, yeah, uh, many uh, political variables concerning politics in these municipalities. Who was the party that was uh, ruling uh, in the municipality, uh, the vote shares uh, of, the, of the main party, and, and also whether there were elections nearby, um, a different, different sort of, of political variables concerning municipalities aside uh, the migration intensity and aside the marginalization. And here you have some information that was for us, uh, well, a source of concern because what you have in there is the relationship between the migration intensity index uh, on the left uh, panel and on the right panel you have the percentage of remittance recipient households and what you have in the x-axis is actually the level of marginality of the municipalities. So uh, actually what these figures are telling us is that precisely municipalities at the medium level, at the medium level of marginality, those are the ones that experience more, migra mo more out migration and that receive more remittances. Mm -hmm. So here we have the problem. The problem is given, given uh, the initiative uh, of the program to, uh, to migrants is going to, in a way, cause that the main beneficiaries of the program are going to be medium level marginality uh, commu communities. So uh, that's uh, probably the first funding uh, that is, I think, very, very important because Ambassador Gomez, uh, when, when, uh, when Ambassador Gomez wa was explaining the objectives of the program, one of the objectives was actually to target uh, high marginality municipalities. Well, in our view, uh, the program is not good at that. It's not, it's not achieving that goal. Uh, it is absolutely true that the municipalities that receive and participate in the program are better than the ones that do not participate, but that doesn't mean that it is the poorest uh, municipalities, the ones that are benefiting uh, the most from, from the program. Um, it is true that the other objective of the program, which is keeping uh, a lively connection with the diaspora, that's something that the Tres por Uno program does very, very well. Uh, but um, whereas we acknowledge the fact that the program is very useful in that respect, we think that the program should be modified uh, to guarantee that uh, poor, really poor municipalities uh, participate uh, in the program. And also, um, one challenge that the program has is that it seems to be creating a sort of two tire division cleavage within the migrant community, where uh, you have, on the one hand, very well organized. Uh, hometown associations with very long tradition of uh, participation in this program, mainly in the state of Zacatecas, and then you have hometown associations that come from uh, from new uh, migration states, much less organized, poorer uh, municipalities that that face the challenge of actually doing well in this sort in this sort of programs. So. Um, 
other than the result concerning the, uh, s the, the regressive uh, outcome concerning participation in the program, we also found, uh, we also found political biases, namely uh, municipalities that are ruled by the same political party as, as the one that was, uh, that was at the federal level, uh, the, the party of the presidency, those municipalities were more likely to participate in the program. Okay, so there were two sort of biases here. Um, we, uh, I don't know whether I have time, I, I would like just um, Very to... Very quickly, because we yeah. have time is... Okay, I would like just, just to mention um, uh, the second part of the research that we did. Um, when we uh, sort of discovered in, 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 in our analysis this political bias uh, in participation in the program, meaning that it seems that those parties that um, uh, are ruled by the same uh, party as the party of the presidency were more likely to participate in the program, someone asked us in the audience, uh, well, but it may, it may not be a, a top-down bias, a politician's bias, a policymaker's bias, but it just may be that migrants don't want to invest in, uh, in municipalities ruled by certain, uh, by certain political parties. So what we did is to go to the field and ask the migrants whether that was the case. Uh, we did um, uh, field work research in a state in Guanajuato. We went to these four little villages there, uh, interviewed approximately 60 uh, politicians, including government officials, uh, migrant leaders. Uh, this was a fascinating work because uh, apart from going to, the vi to these villages and to the communities, uh, uh, we also went to uh, Dallas Fort Worth, which is the area in which the uh, hometown associations coming from these little villages in Guanajuato uh, concentrated. So we were interviewing people on both sides uh, of the border, and we were asking basically to these hometown associations whether they had any problems in uh, investing in certain municipalities because of uh, the political character of the political party that was rul ruling a certain uh, a certain municipality. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, finish because uh, I would like to mention the main results of this fieldwork research, and the main results were basically that uh, we found that municipalities actually have municipal governments have too much power when it comes to deciding who is going to participate, which projects they are going to support or not. Uh, and this is because the presentation, the presentation of technical files that are going to be evaluated happen through the municipalities. So if the municipality doesn't want to support a certain hometown association or whether a hometown association doesn't have the skills, capacity of organization uh, to uh, prepare these technical files by themselves, they are going to find uh, that municipalities are, are actually a veto. Uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to, to proposing um, and to advancing their their projects, um, so I guess that there are two there are a couple of conclusions or a couple of suggestions and recommendations. One is that maybe uh, in the program there should be some some serious thinking about setting up <coughs> some very clear rules, equation, condition, precondition concerning poverty. Uh, and marginalization if, if uh, the program is to hit and uh, to favor uh, most back backward communities um, because it is not doing so at the moment. Uh, and the other recommendation, I think, would be to try to figure out ways in which the program is less politically biased or less politically charged, especially at the municipal level. Uh, municipalities, municipal mayors shouldn't have so much pow power in deciding um, who is going to be participating in the program or not. I mean to be constructive with this criticism uh, because <laughs> I think that the, the, the program is actually very, very valuable, but it's certainly, there is a lot of room to, to, be, to be improved. Okay, thank you.